Thanks, guys. Thank oh. you. Well, first of all, we have to say happy birthday. Yeah. Yes, it's my Thank birthday you for today. spending birthday. it with us on the one show. Of course, show. of course. Um, where would you be if you weren't promoting a book? So, oh, I'd be on a cruise somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, surrounded Fair enough. by Greek gods. But we are yeah. glad to have you. But I'm here and I'd rather be here. Oh, oh, me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheeky smile. <laughs> We have got a little surprise for you, actually. It's have you? you might yeah. recognise. Uh, he played your on-screen husband in uh, Vicar of Dibley. Have a look at this. Happy birthday from your loving husband. You never come home at night. You're out on tour, busy being funny, but lots of love. Oh, oh. I adore him. He was on the other week. He is such a nice man, such isn't he? Such a nice man. Such a nice Massively man. handsome. Very. Yeah. Um, now then, this new book. Yes. A title we can't share at seven yeah. o'clock on BBC One. Yeah. <laughs> but it talks about the moments that haven't gone to plan in your life. That's it? correct. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, yes, it has a slightly rude word in the title, although I don't find the word at all rude. That was a word that my mum used to use, and I think it's the kind of word that you gives you a bit of an admonishment, but a hug at the same time. Do you know what I mean? It's like a gentle slap. <laughs> um, and basically, I've used it because uh, I have just made so many mistakes in my life. I realise that I'm the sort of queen of the faux pas. Oh. If I've got a mouth, which I have, I will put my foot in it. And I just thought, this is a way for me to tell stories about things that I've done wrong, mistakes I've made, some of the backs stage stories of things like, you know, I might have been in Harry Potter and you see that I do a, a scene with the hippo in Harry Potter, but I also have the story to tell you of how it came about, you know. So yeah. it's all the little stories that go with it and all the times that I've been an absolute Egypt. <laughs> oh, we love them. Yeah. I mean, we're going to go through a few oh, examples. Yeah. I want to talk we? to you about a few more, if it's okay, okay Dawn. Because yeah, uh, apparently it started from when you was a... Uh... Very young, yeah. uh, from a, with a visit from the Queen Mother. Yes, we were very lucky that my dad was in the RAF and the Queen Mother came to visit us. And um, amazing. I was, you know, I think I was four, and I was a bit disappointed because she turned up without unicorns, <laughs> uh, without a crown. <laughs> Everything, you know, I just of thought, course. what's going on? And then, honest to God, she smiled and she had brown teeth. <gasps> and I thought, uh, it is a witch. It is a witch coming into our house. Because when you're four, somebody who's got brown teeth, that, that, that's what it is. So I honestly did not want her to come in. I refused to speak to her. Oh, wow. I mean, I was a complete pillock <laughs> when it came to her. And I just clung to my dad's leg and I wouldn't let go. Oh, my goodness. No, idiot. Yeah. Well, it goes on and on. It goes on One and on. One of my favourite things that you've done this year is the traitor sketch yeah. for Comic Relief. Brilliant. Absolutely yeah. hilarious. Good. But there was a little moment, wasn't there, behind the scenes with yes, Danny Dyer? there was. You know, I'm a big fan of Danny Dyer, so I was excited when he agreed to do that sketch. Yeah. And he came in, and I was being a bit over-ingratiating with him. Um, and I've got a niece who was working on EastEnders at the time as in the arts department, and I said to Danny, Oh, Danny, when you go in on Monday, look out for my niece, Hannah, and make sure that you say hi to her, you know, because it's important, isn't it, that we include young people into the industry and stuff. So, you know, be kind to her. And he, he just looked, watched me as I blethered on. <laughs> and then um, when I'd finished talking, he went, you realise I've left? I've left EastEnders. <laughs> okay. And I went, oh... Oh, right, you went, yeah, quite a big story, main story, at Christmas, yeah, I've gone. Mm. Uh, you know, those moments where you just think, oh, oh, <laughs> just want to creep, you just want the earth to yeah. open up. Yeah. But now we, you've got a book, so it's... Yeah, I've got a book, <laughs> with all of them in. Should, should keep going? Yeah, yeah, go Feels on. Feels like there's more, we might as well yeah. keep going. I like going. this one. <laughs> yeah, um, apparently when you auditioned for Mamma Mia, that didn't yes. quite go to plan either. Yeah. Oh, that go was on. really bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, um, I pretty much was being offered the part. Uh, this is in the first film. And I was so excited, you know, Meryl Streep and Grease yeah. and yeah. Uh, Music of Abba and all of that. And I went in for the singing audition, which I t was told was a formality because uh, I was told that they'd be able to retune anybody who sang too badly. And I went into the room where they do the, you know, the audition. That's a man at a piano, by the way. Yeah. In and, um, and I could not get off one note. I could not. So I was singing like this, Mamma Mia, here we go again, my, my, how can I get this joke? That's, that's how I was singing. And honestly, I tried three songs like that. And the, at the end of it, the man just said, well, it's very nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you too. Oh, that's the end of that. Then. Well, I mean, nothing else. I'm tenacious. If you reject away. me from something, I'll do my own version. That's that's the way I go I at love life. That. Love it. And was it sort of, you know, was it cathartic, Don, writing all these stories down? Did it help you move through the embarrassment? It does because, you know, look, 
I'm fed up of us all trying to pretend to be perfect. Yeah. I'm fed up of filters and selfies and all of that, because that bit is dishonest, isn't it? I mean, I'm just... I'm the sort of anti-perfection league, is what I want to invent, where we just embrace all these stupid moments when we've humiliated ourselves. Instead yeah. of having embarrassment about yeah. it, I want to sort of wrangle the power of it back to you so you tell stories about it and then you own it properly. You can apologise if you've really made an idiot of yourself. Yeah. But, frankly, I think you should wear wear your mistakes like medals, you know, and be proud of them. And then people can have a good laugh. All of these mistakes are the source of good fun. I'm on tour at the moment with this show and I'm telling these stories every night yeah. because it's just good fun to tell people when you have been a fool. Yeah. And I have been a fool over it. It's a tsunami yeah. of, of mistakes in my entire life. I'm a mistake wrapped in flesh. Well, That's I could join I your gang. You're I've got good. plenty of material. No, no, but it's, it's a really nice message to send. Because you're right, it I is. think everybody right now is so like intent on being perfect it's with social media right. and everything well i just want to chase the shame out of it you yeah. know because you can end up if you make mistakes you can end up with shame sort of sticking to you yeah. and it's a bit like shining a torch into darkness if you if you laugh at something like this it suddenly it's not there anymore it dissipates it's gone okay. and we can and also i love people that tell me when they have been fools. You know, it's a trusting thing, isn't it? Yeah. When you say, you'll never guess what I said to so-and-so. I love people who yeah. do that. Yeah. And you you trust me, I trust you, I'll tell you another story back. <laughs> yeah. So oh, that's what it is. So I filled the book up with Love all it. of these stories. Yeah, that